Hello, I am Lux. And I am Ember. And this is our thoughts on the Nintendo Switch presentation. We promise to stay more on topic this time. Yeah, well, we have a lot to talk about and how that presentation was a little of a mixed bag. I mean, the information was good, but how it was presented was a little... I liked the directs a little bit better. Yeah. In some cases, it felt a little corporate, is the best way I could say it to me. Uh, I would say stilted. Yeah. Though it is nice that we saw some new faces. These are all guys who have been working for Nintendo for a while, but they've all been behind the scenes, and they've directed a lot of the major franchises in the past. We just didn't realize it, because who really reads the credits at the end of a video game? You're assuming I can make it that far. <laughs> yeah, apparently she's never beaten a Zelda, and she calls herself a fan. <laughs> I have beaten side games. I just have not completely beaten any canon franchise game without cheat codes. <laughs> And Especially the first game, you know, where you can make your name Zelda and get straight to the second overworld. <laughs> and then there's me, who's beaten at least three. Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, oh wait, there's more, Skyward Sword, um, let's see, I know there's at least one more now, give me a second here. Let's see, Majora's Mask, Skyward Sword, oh, oh give me Wind a Waker? Oh yeah, Wind Waker, okay, there's five, that's four, but I'll have a fifth one because also the first DS game. Phantom Hourglass. I still haven't beaten the second one, though, because god dang it, those train tracks. Okay, quit derailing us. This is about the Switch presentation. I should put a badumch there, or a, as most people know, a rim shot? <laughs> yes, so let's just dive straight in. So, 1-2 Switch? Also, sorry if my voice is a little rough, people. I'm just getting over a cold. I don't know... Considering it's not actually being bundled with the system, and it's 50 bucks, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of high for a party game. And I don't tend to have that kind of life, but it's a nice touch that it's a game you can play without having to look at the screen. That, like in traditional non-video games, you have the opportunity to analyze your opponent. Like in poker and chess and other strategic games yeah this game is specifically designed for you to look at the person you're playing with across the way just looking at the presentation it feels very wario Mm-hmm. and at the start of that video i actually thought it may be like are they bringing back hogan's alley <laughs> yeah and i was immediately thinking it was some sort of shooter i wasn't necessarily thinking party game but i was thinking more of something that was a quick draw scenario whatever the rest of the game was i didn't catch it the first time through but there's actually a milking game in that set of mini games where you actually milk a cow and you do poses and dancing and sling spells at each other and balancing it's a great party game. It's like the new Wii Sports. I remember having so much fun with Wii Sports when I first got my hands on the Wii and was around other people. Yeah, I, I heard so make a great comment about that. It's basically what would happen if Wii Sports and WarioWare got together. They actually, like, why didn't they just rebrand this as a WarioWare game? Well, I think they're trying to branch out a little bit because moving forward to ARMS, we haven't seen Nintendo put out a lot of new IPs. And this is the second one in a long time because Splatoon is the other one, which is coming back, which is going to be awesome because it's an actual sequel. I just expected a port with upgrades. That's what I was expecting too, but just to stay on ARMS because we'll talk a lot more about Splatoon, trust us. Yeah. Well, you've seen it. We did two whole videos just on Splatoon. Mm -hmm. Well, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Anyways, Please do. ARMS. So, it had very much a Splatoon feel to me in that slight cartooniness and the fact that you had a matchup. And it wasn't really clear in the trailer, but during the conversation in the presentation afterwards, there was a lot more strategy to it. Which also, to me, ties back to Splatoon and having the different weapons, the different characters, different strategies. And from people who have actually played it, say it's a lot more in-depth than you think. It's basically like how you look at Splatoon and go, oh, 
kind of seems like a fun game. And then you start hearing people talk about it who've actually played it and go, dude, it's so much better than what you've seen. Yeah, I have a feeling that ARMS is going to be one of those ones that I'd be willing to try out because I think it's better than it looks. Also, the ability that you told me about that the motion controls can be turned off. Yeah, for those people who don't want motion controls, this game can also be completely played by just using the buttons. So I think there's a lot of potential here. You know, they were able to do a lot with Splatoon, and I'm hoping they took some of that same philosophy into the development of ARMS. Yeah, and making a whole bunch of fun around it, because all these characters look like they already have a lot of personality. I really hope they took all the personality abilities that they had from Splatoon and put them into this and gave this world a lot of life and personality and soaked it in whatever genre they picked. <laughs> Yeah, because it looks like it could be really engaging if they did it right. And not just engaging in the game mechanics, but in the actual world. Because on the surface of it, okay, two fighters in an arena. Okay, we've seen this scenario how many times? But I bet they did so much more with it. And I really want to see what else they did with it. I mean, we can already tell by the characters they've shown off in just the trailer and the ones you get to, um, ones they get to play at the event afterwards. They have a ninja? A mummy? I mean, that's a creative idea if you think about it, because he's got bandages that he can use to throw at his arms with. You know, it makes sense. And the girl uses ribbons. She's actually called Ribbon Girl. Mm -hmm. And what's really neat about the ninja is that his arms are chains. Yeah, and that nice shuriken hairstyle that he has going. And he can throw shurikens, which are still attached. <laughs> Yes, because that's one of the problems. Once you throw your shuriken, you got to go get it back because no, no stars or ninja prints are left behind because everybody needs a ninja. And another neat ability of the ninja character from what I've heard by people who played him on the demo floor is when he dodges, he disappears. Nice. Ninja done well. Mm-hmm. Well, we can actually go back to the Switch a little bit because they shut off some new features of the Switch, like HD Rumble, which everyone's kind of like, well, that's just weird. People who have actually used it, yeah, they go, yeah, you can tell what's going on just by how it feels. Yeah, I, I'm totally in for that because one of the reasons I never upgraded my original DS was because it had the cartridge slot for the Game Boy Advance, and I had a rumble pack. It matters. And if it matters way back then, considering how dated the DS is compared to modern technology... Imagine what an updated one could do. And there's actually a game in 1 2 Switch where you have to guess what's in a box by shaking it. I win. <laughs> oh, really? Excuse me. I was able to tell you what your Christmas gift was by you describing it over the phone. Sorry, that all really came out the wrong way. I know how magical you are when it comes to guessing Christmas presents. <laughs> As she just said, she guessed what was inside of one of my Christmas presents by me describing the box over the phone. This was a standard wrapped box. My mom actually wrapped a pair of earphones in an, it was basically three boxes in one box. And she guessed that they were earphones. I also kind of guessed that they were earphones, but she confirmed it for me because her, her parents can't buy her any gifts. <laughs> No, I actually am required to keep a tally of my right and wrong answers when I open gifts. And the number of right answers always comes out ahead. But yeah, HD Rumble, it's nice that they had the motion controls back. And the fact that there's this IR sensor that can tell how far away it is from something. And recognize hand gestures, which is also kind of cool. Yes. So I'm probably going to be taking the Joy-Con controller around and just measuring things because that's way more convenient than a tape measure. But yeah, that's like, okay. The only other thing that they really mentioned was the, the battery life, which was a mm, two and a half to six hours, depending on the game you're playing and probably depending on how bright you have the screen. Yeah, so... That could be a little rough for travel, but hopefully, like they did with the Wii U, they'll sell um, a higher capacity battery pack that you can purchase. Or with the USB-C, hopefully it'll be compatible with a lot of the portable chargers that you can get on the market. Yeah, a lot of people are, are, going, are excited about that because, for one, that's a standard. Nintendo usually tries to make their own standards, but this time, they're going with a standard. Oh yeah, good, because it actually does come with its charging cable. 
Yes, which I think we're only getting because it is technically a home console, even though yeah. it can be taken on the go. I, we're not seeing another issue like with the new 3DS where you have to buy a charging cable separately because you have to buy the charging cable because when you trade in your old 3DS, the shops won't take it unless you give them the cable. I'm guessing it's a different thing because in Japan it works a little differently. You can just sell the console by itself. So you get to keep your charging cable so everyone had a charging cable over there. And apparently products also usually only come with just the product and no cable in Japan, apparently. Yeah, but you see that didn't really translate over in Nintendo products until the newest 3DS. So I'm glad it's coming with a, a charging cable in it because it makes so much sense for a portable system and sense for a console because you're going to need to plug it in all the time when you're... Though I have a feeling I'm going to be sitting on the couch most of the time with it plugged in, playing it in my hands, than I am going to be having it plugged into the TV. Well, it does look like a good-sized screen, and we played a lot of the Wii U games off-screen. Mm-hmm, because it was more convenient to sit back on the couch. And that, that was another thing, when they talked about all of the different Nintendo products that they took ideas from and put it into the Switch. <laughs> it was just painful that what they claimed they took from the GameCube was the, the handle. handle. <laughs> that hurt. The GameCube had more things about it that were good. I know it was kind of a low point for them. Uh, the controller is still said to be one of the best controllers ever made, especially the Wavebird. Yes, and see, that's one of the things that I would have mentioned as coming from the GameCube because, okay, I skipped Nintendo 64, but did that one have wireless controllers? Nope. So the GameCube was the first Nintendo console with wireless controllers. First party wireless controllers. Yes, third party doesn't count. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd clarify in case people went, but huh? <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we're meaning first party made controllers that are wireless. Nintendo started that. And the WaveBirds worked really well, and you were able to, you know, with that tuning option, you had, you were able to keep them from cross-censoring. And, okay, so you had to have a little plug-in. Big deal. It was the first. Yeah, when it came out, I was like, I am so getting one of those. Oh, my God. I think the only other downside is the WaveBird does not have rumble. No, so that did make some of the games on the GameCube harder to play. But that's the feature that I would have focused on from the GameCube. I really felt like the GameCube got shortchanged in that presentation. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> yeah. You know, we talk about portability, touchscreens, playability, interaction, touchscreens, gyroscopic controls, and the GameCube gets a handle. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the GameCube, another thing is there are apparently going to be ports of GameCube games for the Virtual Console onto the Switch. And that makes me wonder... Are the triggers on the Joy-Cons analog with a digital click? Because that was one of, the another, one of the other features that the GameCube controller had, is you had an analog trigger you could pull down, and then once you got all the way down, you could push it a little bit further and go click, because there was a button at the bottom. No one else has done that. Yeah. Not so, even Nintendo. <laughs> so we're going to have to wait and see. I hate saying that. But it's just one of those things. And since we're talking a little bit about controllers, let's talk a little bit about those Joy-Con controllers. <laughs> I've heard they're a whole lot more comfortable than they look. They look hugely uncomfortable. And I think with how small they are, the size of your hands are suddenly going to be more important. Because they're probably great for me, a little less great for Lux. I heard they're more comfortable than they look. Also, I heard those wrist straps that come with the system, thank God, make a huge difference. Yes, I love wrist straps. Wrist straps are good. Yeah, but these wrist straps are different because they also come with a little piece that slides onto the um, controller, making it a little bit taller and making it easier to hit the L and R buttons. Yeah, there were a lot of good features in the Joy-Con and in the way that they stood and how it snapped into the base unit. Also, it's a nice touch that when you buy your Switch, which of course none of us can now because everybody freaking pre-ordered it, you could choose between the basic gray controllers or the bright. Which I heard actually looks really good in person. It doesn't look garish, which yeah. is what I, what I was worried about. I was like, oh God, those blue, that, that red's almost pink. Oh my God. Yeah, but it's very vibrant. And very easy to tell controllers apart for those who get a little possessive. And you're also able to get those colors 
in the accessory Joy-Cons because you can purchase extra Joy-Cons. That's one of the things that's not sold out yet. Yeah, but they are so expensive for two of them. They come in a pack of two. You can also buy them individually, but the pack of two is $80. That's $40 per controller, which is the same price as a Wiimote, which is basically with the cramming into these little things. But still, $80. It's basically, it's the most expensive controller out in the market. Yeah, that is kind of painful. And the Pro Controller is $10 more expensive than the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4 controller. Yeah, so that part's a little ouch, but considering how much they're cramming into there and that you're getting a set of those included with the $300 system. So $300 system minus 80 for the controllers. Also, I guessed the price. I did give a range. I said between 250 and 300. And it was at the top of your range. But take a $300 system, subtract $80 for controllers, and the base cost of the system is 220. Oh, I didn't even do the math on that. That's a good point right there. And it doesn't include a pack end game at all, but the GameCube didn't come with a pack end game. No, they didn't do that until right before they were ready to do the price drop because they started giving you a $50 game. And the Wii only got a packing game in America and Europe. So it didn't happen everywhere. And they know there's no point in including Breath of the Wild because we're all going to go buy it anyways. Yes, you and your mixed feelings on that game. My feelings regarding the Legend of Zelda franchise are complicated. <laughs> uh, maybe because this one feels like, why are they doing Twilight Princess all over again to me? Like, I had no problems whatsoever. I just bought the Wii version. <laughs> yeah, uh, so did I. And then I had trouble with the controls and never really played it and ended up buying an upgraded version for the Wii U and it's all very complicated. But you must admit that latest trailer, oh my god. Yes, the latest trailer, oh my god. Also, slight downside, but at least they include other languages for text. There won't be switchable audio in the game. So whatever region you're buying the game in, will have that language as the audio track. Yes, but since they got rid of region lock, if you want to hear it in Japanese, you can buy a Japanese copy and switch the text to English. So that is actually doable because they're finally killing region lock. Thank you, global market, global economy. Makes sense. Yes, if I happen to be visiting Japan and feel like picking up a video game, I'd like to be able to pick up a video game. Oh, I wish I remember the Japanese name for Elite Beat Agents. If we ever go to Japan, we can look it up and buy a Japanese DS in order to play it. I was thinking that maybe they could make a new one. That would also be awesome. Because it also has the same technology for touchscreens that cell phones have now. So they can have more than one finger touching the screen at the same time. Mm, that would be very useful in an EBA style game. Yeah. So another thing people seem to be a little bothered with is that you can't change Link's name. Yeah, that was recently announced. Um, Ayanuma, Ayanuma, the way it's his name there, it sounds like something very painful where you stick something up. But Ayanuma? Ayanuma, thank you. Recently did in an interview where he was showing off more features of the game, he said that in this version of the game, you can't name Link. And I'm like, yeah, but you, you can name the horses. You can name 50 horses in this game. Yeah, Epona 1 through 49. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's like, not to be sexist or anything, but like the, the generic thing for girls is horses. <laughs> yeah, so you could just play The Legend of Zelda and go tame all the horses. And that would be like the best little girl horse sim game ever. Ever. Because uh, they're going to be all different colors, they're going to have spotted, they're going to have Arabian, at least by the screenshots I've seen. And it would be so much better because it wouldn't be that sugary, sticky, sweet garbage that they try to shove at girls because we're all supposed to be powder puffs. I hope we can decorate the horses because I want to put feathers on stuff on the side of their manes and stuff like that. If I'm remembering correctly, it looked like some had slightly braided manes. Because I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to customize my horse. To make the joke, yes, pimp my ride. <laughs> oh, but it looks beautiful. The English voice acting sounds great. Yeah, I'm surprised, though. After listening to the Japanese voice acting and how used to I am listening to Japanese voice acting, I'm actually slightly preferring some of the voices in the Japanese track. Specifically, two points I always find that Japanese voice actors seem to do better to me is crying and um, the old man voice. 
Yeah, well, the Japanese voice actors are probably actually crying. Because <laughs> just some of what I've heard Japanese actors have gone through over the years for the sake of a role. There was this old black and white movie that I was watching at one point, and the lead female actress in this was actually called out by the director at one point, and he went, will you please go walk around the building a couple of times because you look too happy. I think you had something tasty for lunch. Whoa. Okay. Yes, and I'm probably going to get the first word wrong. I believe it was called Bancho the Sheriff. If anyone wants to go look it up, that was in the um, after credit features of the DVD. It was actually a very interesting movie, but uh, back to Switch. And I really want to play this this Zelda game, mainly because I, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore everything the game tells me. I'm going to go right after I go out of the game. I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna go and climb over this mountain, the, the one I just came out of. Bye. <laughs> I'm also going to do a lot of, God, this game's beautiful. Stop attacking me, Moblin. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> pretty much. Lex is going to log 80 hours and have 1% gameplay completed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Have we talked about Super Mario Odyssey yet? No, no. I figured we could go there next. Because I am going to destroy that, like, what looks like Brooklyn just by hopping around. And I mean... Mario actually gets on top of a taxi and the, and the front hood pops up. I'm, like, I'm going to be jumping all over taxis and breaking them. And... Yeah, and I know I said previously that I felt I was pretty much done with the Mario franchise. This one has me interested. The visuals look really good. The hat adds a whole new jumping mechanic. It looks a lot like a platformer, which is what I want from a Mario game. And it's a new mechanic, not, oh, we added new suit. No, we actually have a new game mechanic. And it looks like Bowser's hat is also sentient. Ooh, odd theory. Yes, I'm making theories about a Mario game that's not even out yet, because it just popped into my head. Um, what if the hat's controlling Bowser? Yes, I thought about that too. But then is the other hat controlling Mario, or is that more of a partnership? Also... Looking at the color of the eyes in the hat, I was able to dismiss the theory that maybe Luigi somehow got shoved into a hat. <laughs> oh, poor Luigi. I do love both Luigi mansions, even though I haven't beaten the second one. Yeah, but I really like the way this looks. And my only concern with the hats being sentient is that I'm hoping this isn't going to be a whole Minish Cap thing. Oh, something got turned into a hat? Because that that's what happened to Minish Cap. Yeah. Also, the constant back talking. Or was that just in the comic? <laughs> that was just in the comic. Uh, that's actually another Zelda game I haven't beaten. I got stuck on a dungeon. And the problem is I got stuck in the dungeon and then another game came out. When I came back to the dungeon, I was like, yep, I'm even more lost. <laughs> <laughs> that is what the internet's for. Yes, yes, it is. But I have a tendency to try to play through a Zelda game first before I start looking up walkthroughs to get all the little Easter eggs and... Little things I missed the first time through. It's kind of like how when I play through most games, I try to beat it on my own first. And then I go and get cheat codes or stuff like that. This is why I like it when you play a game and you beat it and it unlocks the cheat menu. That's always fun. Especially when the cheat menu has parts that you unlock by doing specific things in the game. I'm looking at you, the conduit, because that was great. You actually had to do certain things. like get a certain number of headshots to unlock the insta-kill. Yeah, that was great. So, yeah, back to, to the, the switch. And a little more on Mario Odyssey. Because that game looks beautiful. It looks amazing. I mean, just picking out the details on Mario's clothing. Oh my <clears> god. <throat> you can see the seams. You can see the texture in the hat and the Oh my god. Also, I'm drawing him if you can't tell already. I hope you can tell by now. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually putting art into this one this time. Last time I just grabbed a bunch of screenshots from the internet and then put them together, which I realized took longer than actually drawing. Which was funny, because he thought he was going to save time. Yes, I thought I could just put up a bunch of stills, and I got into it and started, I need to do this, I need to have this pan, I need to put these superimposed images over this. Four hours later. <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't watched that one, you could go back and watch that one. It started as a Switch video, but we kind of got on a whole world of Nintendo kick. Yeah, but back to Mario and the detail. 
that forest level. Looks amazing. Also, those guys kind of look like giant teapots. And apparently, based on some analysts that I watched, you can climb the trees. Awesome. I am going to climb those big trees. And I may stay in it for a while. I'm going to try to hop between the trees if I can. If you're allowed to climb the trees, I bet you can hop, especially using your hat as a midway jump. Because mm. that's a great way to extend a jump. That's a good point. And I love that new mechanic. I can't wait to actually try it out. It also looks like you can actually toss the hat at the base of a taller point and bounce off of it to get higher. Yeah. And also that the hat may be used as a weapon as well. Yeah, and with the hat being like this, do you think they'll have power-ups? Because the hat is kind of like every power-up. It gives you the attack of the fireball. It gives you the extra bounce of the clown hat and stuff from the Galaxy games. So are we just going to have this hat the entire time? Not that I would complain about it, because it looks like the hat's very versatile. Or are we just going to get upgrades to the hat that will allow it to do more things? We might just get upgrades to the hat, but it looked like that crazy hat shop where the... Um day of the dead type characters were might be an actual shop so you may be able to purchase upgrades there which reminds me when the trailer first started i actually was like are we doing another splatoon thing because that poster looks like it belongs in splatoon <laughs> yeah it really did and that was another thing i was like "Ooh," and you know i'm watching the trailer and all these different worlds that mario goes to I'd love to see some IP crossovers and have him end up in Splatoon as a level. What was really funny is I was watching a reaction video, another reaction video to it, and someone actually went, is this crazy taxi? Is this crazy taxi? Because <laughs> the taxis in the town looked so colorful and everything. I'm like, that's actually a good idea. Sega, get on that, please. Especially since you've re-released it on everything and everything. I mean, it even came out on cell phones. How the heck do you play crazy taxi on a cell phone? I have no idea. But, I mean, if you can play Mario on a cell phone. That's easier to do than, well, I probably wouldn't have been able to figure it out, but Nintendo did. That's a fun game. I need to play through it more. All right. Shall we move on to Splatoon 2? Nintendo's going to get more money out of us than ever, because by the time we actually pick up a Switch in Splatoon 2, the free offer on the online is going to be up. So we're going to have to pay for that to be able to play online, because, god dang it, I am going to play the Splatfest. Yeah. I want my Splatfest back. Though I really hope Nintendo has like a family plan. So more than one people can be online at the same time with one account instead of having to purchase for each person who has an account. That will get really expensive really quick for a four-person family. Yeah. So I really need more detail on how the online is going to work because overall, I'm fine playing games by myself. But Splatoon... Even though the original single player was great, you know, for the matches, you have to be online. And Nintendo's making that a separate thing this time. Which is understandable since they're finally adding things like voice chat and putting a lot more effort into the online system. And for people who are complaining about, what do you mean it has to be an app on my phone for voice chat? What do you have on you 24-7 nowadays? Your freaking smartphone. Why are you complaining about that? It's going to be really easy to matchmake with your friends on the Nintendo app on your phone, then voice chat right from there. It's all going to be on your phone. Plus, it makes more sense to me to have it on a separate device. So less of the processing power has to be used for other things other than the game you're playing. Yeah, and you really want to invest in another headset. When you can just use your Bluetooth headset or buy a really cheap one that you plug right into your phone. I mean, I have one of those. It makes it really convenient when I'm doing stuff on the computer and helping people with their machines. Yeah, I do a little tech support on the side. <laughs> so yeah, and the only thing with the Splatoon voice chat is like, I don't know that I really want to hear people talking. So many other voice chats in various game franchises have a really bad rap for a lot of... For 12-year-olds cussing you out. Yeah, but that brings us to the parental controls. Oh, that is an awesome video. I had to show it to you before we actually did this recording because it was just the cutest thing ever. Oh my god! Yes. So voice chat can be turned off in the parental controls. So I, as an adult, can go in and make everyone shut up. And I bet you there's controls in there for adults, too, where you're like, only my friends can talk to me. Mm -hmm. Which would be awesome, because I would love to get a group together and play Splatoon. I never managed to do that on the original. You know, Lux and I managed to play in a few matches, but 
I never got a whole team of just my friends together. It just never worked out. And new weapons. I want new weapons. <laughs> uh, I w I'm going to get whatever weapon that special comes with. I can't remember which one it was. Do you remember which special it was? I don't remember right now. Oh, the one that I wanted? Uh, well, I put it out of my mind because you told me it was tied to a sniper rifle, which I am very bad oh, with. That was one of them. You, there was another one just before that one. The one she's referencing now was called the hose or something because with the sniper rifle, there's a new special where you can charge it up when you get your special and it will shoot through walls. It will shoot all the way across the map. It's basically a finer tuned version of the killer whale. Yeah. So, but up to this point, I really suck with the sniper rifle because I like close quarters combat. I am totally ninja. I sneak up on my opponents and take them out. Yeah. But the other one I like, I like the rain. The rain's a good one, too, because I'm like, which one does that go with? I want the rain. Yes, I want the rain. Also, I want the jetpack, because everyone needs a jetpack. Speaking of new weapons, the one new weapon I am going to probably abuse the heck out of, because I got very used to fast weapons covering a lot of territory, with the new dual gun system, mainly because it also has dodge. Yes. I am going to dodge so much, but I have a feeling dodge also uses ink. I would think that it would, because otherwise it's too powerful. Because if you look at how the gun works because it actually uses the ink to dodge it shoots it out of the bottom of the gun yeah so it propels you out of the way which is how you get a quick dodge and it covers a small space of ink where you left it doesn't actually leave a trail behind you but it leaves a spot where you dodged from which then people will probably be able to use and calculate which way you dodge to and how far you dodge so someone could see the opponent you're dodging may not be able to reconnect to you in time, but someone else who's up there waiting to snipe you sees that you dodged and can calculate where you dodged to. Also, that reminds me, one of the newer specials is this ground pound move. It's the one where the inkling jumped up, turned all ink colored, and then pounded the ground and a bunch of ink came up. Nice. You could actually do that when squid jumping. <gasps> awesome! So... If you have that special charged and you hit the back to home button and then squid jump from there to another person, you can actually ground pound on top of your teammate and it doesn't hurt them, but it gives them a shield as you're hitting the ground. Which is an awesome touch because so often when you super jumped to a teammate, they would get nailed because you just gave away their location on the map and everyone would camp out and kill them while you were still spawning. A certain classic weapons got upgrades like well not really upgrades but changes to their mechanics like the roller now can actually splat in two different ways when you flick it if you're on the ground it flicks like it did before but if you're in the air it flicks a more narrow thing but goes farther mm. and um sniper rifles now have a charge mode in them we can do a charge shot from a distance problem is you light up like a christmas tree well there always needs to be trade-offs to keep the weapons balanced and I want to know more about this location, because it doesn't look like Ingopolis. It's a whole new location. It's actually a quick train ride, apparently, from the old location, which I actually hope that we can train ride to. I want to be able to use that train, because <laughs> apparently it's in this one, too. Yeah, well, I, I've seen the train. I've seen cars. I want to be able to use the train and get from the old Ingopolis to this new place. And that would be a great way for them to add more content. If you could actually play the old levels by taking a train ride that perhaps you unlock later. Maybe mm -hmm. that's one of your single player mode unlocks. Ooh, yeah. And also a lot of people are like so surprised because I was surprised like it's a full blown two because it's so soon after the first one. I think it's just barely a little bit more than a year. I think it's closer to two years. Um... I'm trying to remember uh, the gentleman who did the presentation on the Squid Research Facility. I thought he said closer to two years. Uh, guys, don't hold us hard and fast to those numbers. But all things considered, I was really expecting it to just be a port with upgrades. And then yeah. I wouldn't have been thrilled, but I would have been okay with that. But they really put the effort into making it a whole new game. And if the story is anything of the quality of the story of the first game. This is going to be awesome. Also, quick little tidbits I forgot to mention to you before. Not only are we getting pants, but we're also getting gloves. Mm. Gloves could really affect gameplay because the mobility of your hands matters to how quickly you can fire your weapons. Yeah, but at least based on the demo build that they were playing, the pants and the gloves don't currently have stats. Also, you'll be able to wear sandals this time. 
Well, I like wearing sandals, but I don't necessarily think it makes the most sense for a match. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's another new thing that people point out. It's like, oh, there's inklings in sandals now. Because before, they never wore anything except for shoes that completely covered their feet. Yeah. Every shoe that you could purchase in the shop or, you know, have uh, Spike get for you was closed toed And speaking of those side characters, it looks like we have a younger Spike-like character and what looks to be actually a clone of Judd. Because Judd was the last cat alive. Yes. And he was put into a hypersleep by his owner before the world as humans knew it ended. And this one looks like an exact copy of Judd except smaller and more beady eyed. It's also why I'm thinking it may not be a clone or if it is, it's a bad clone. But when you have something that's one of a kind and it's like this can't be a prequel. Just looking at. No, supposedly it's taking place two years after the previous game. Oh, so maybe that's where I got the two years from. Because mm. the gentleman who did the on-stage presentation about Splatoon stayed very much in character regarding his research. So that could just be the timeline between the two games. Yeah, another thing is, like, you never see Callie at all in the trailer. But you see Marie, which I didn't recognize at first. It, it wasn't until I watched an analyst video that I went, That's Marie! Yes, because nobody else has that hair color. Mm -hmm. And the only place she may be seen in the trailer is a, a, a tiny little poster that's partially covered up by an inkling. Yeah, so very interesting. Okay, so covered most of the games. Uh, Mario Kart? Once I eventually get the Switch, I'll probably pick it up since I didn't get the last one. And this one also comes with all the DLC from the previous one plus extra. Mm. That's pretty good. I'm not big into racing games. I haven't really played a Mario Kart since the SNES days. Mm. Well, the nice thing is, if one of us picks up the Switch, we can both play it together because it comes with two controllers. Yes, but I also want to know how accounts are going to work because we each have our own My Nintendo accounts. It's thanks to some leaks and stuff like that, we've actually seen screenshots of how the interface works when you're not in a game. And currently we've seen at most up to three accounts logged into the system at once. And it's going to be really easy because you can actually switch between accounts during games, just like the other consoles. All you have to do is hit the Y button when you're at the home screen. Oh, well, that's good because I've really been wondering, especially since we watched that really cute parental control video, because the parental controls are set by system, not by user. So that means if you set it for one hour, that's all everybody gets. <laughs> yeah, parents can turn it off. Yeah, because they have the smartphone. Yeah, it looks like a lot of stuff can be set through the smartphone apps that are going to be released. Because it looks like the parental controls is going to be a different app than the Switch app that you're going to be using for everything else. At least what we've heard so far, at least what I've heard so far. Which makes sense because, you know, the parents of children are not always necessarily the gamer. Mm -hmm. And so they may just want to be looking at the parental controls and making sure that they have the content set up the way they want their children to experience it. We didn't really go over the video when we were talking about the printing controls, did we? No, because I didn't want us to sidetrack that far. I figured we could do it here. Ah, it was just so cute because it was Bowser and his kid. I'm like, huh, those are one of the few actual parents in the Nintendo universe. Yeah, and it was just really, I mean, it's the villains and it was adorable and it was interesting. And we're adults, the parental controls don't matter to us, but... I enjoyed watching the video, and it had a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. Though, I want to know what Bowser's claws are made out of, and what his phone's made out of, for the fact that one, his claws didn't scratch the screen, and two, his claws worked. Well, you know how you get those gloves that you can use? Maybe he has a special coating for the nails. Mm -hmm. they, they need to make one of those, because I would totally buy that. Yeah, I love how... Tiny the cell phone was. He was like, eh. Yeah, it was nice that they kept it proportional. And it was fun that basically all Bowser... I don't remember which of the Koopa Kids he is. Don't shoot us. Bowser Jr. He was actually Bowser Jr. He wasn't any... The Koopa Kids aren't Bowser's kids. They're only his kids in the um, TV American version of the animation. Yeah. Okay, so the Bowser Jr. was mostly playing Mario Kart as himself. Because mm -hmm. uh, Bowser Jr. actually is Bowser Jr. And we're like, so who did he have? <laughs> uh, 
we probably don't want to know. Also, reptiles are occasionally capable of... Self-reproducing? I think perhaps. Hmm. Should we start to conclude stuff? Well, let's finish talking about how cute it is and then conclude because this is getting up to record territory again. <laughs> yeah, it was so cute. The Mario game looks awesome. Nintendo's doing a lot of good with marketing, except for I was slightly confused on the ad for ARMS. I didn't really get interested in it until I heard about it from other people. Yeah, I, I don't think that the trailer they showed in the Switch presentation really gave you the full depth of what it could do. But the nice thing about these trailers and that first ad for the Switch, the release trailer, it really shows that life and that style that the we would like to play trailers for the Wii did. Yeah, a very encompassing and very show-don't-tell. Mm -hmm. They're doing that very well, and I really hope they actually do that with their ad campaigns, because that will sell the system right there. Yeah, because they got a very high attachment rate on the Wii. Speaking of high attachment rate, from what we can tell, the pre-orders are insane for it. I'm not just talking about the fact that they've sold out. I'm talking about the attach rate. People are buying three games on average per system. And we're trying to figure out, what are the other two games besides Zelda? <laughs> or are they just available for pre-order already? Because <laughs> everyone's like, there's only five games coming out on the day the system comes out. Zelda, 1-2 Switch, Bomberman... Uh, can't remember the name of it right now, but it's Bomberman something, Just Dance, and another game. Like, basically Just Dance and this other game don't count, so... <laughs> Yeah, so it's probably the three yeah. that are what everyone's getting. And that's another thing. Is they've got some powerhouse games at launch because that really hit the DS. People were excited about the DS, but all the games they were excited about were coming out six months later. Having Zelda as a launch title, as complicated as my feelings are about that, is great for the Switch. And I believe Mario is coming out within the first couple of months of the system as well. I think he's coming out in November. Right in time for the holiday season, which if that's correct, that's great timing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I am excited about the system. I can't wait until our local GameStop gets it so I can go in there and go, can I touch it? <laughs> yeah. Cause... Sir, please leave the store. You, you are acting strange. But I want to touch it. I want to touch it. Ah. <laughs> uh... Yes, because the nice thing about the pre-orders being completely sold out is I don't have to make the decision right now, but I want to get my hands on it. I want to play because we like video games. Well, here's the thing. The pre-orders are sold out, but a lot of companies also hold back half their stock for selling on the day of. We don't have that kind of money. <laughs> I know, right? Ugh. Stilted style, but great information. Answered a lot of questions. Feeling oh. a lot better about the system. Speaking of one question that they didn't answer during the presentation, but they actually answered it later on their Twitter and other accounts, the unit that's being sold right now will come with three two gigabytes of storage, but it will accept any SD card size. This includes the one terabyte one that they're currently selling. Okay, so storage is not going to be an issue and comes in a standard format. Yep. Huh. So back to your thoughts. I just thought, I was like, oh wait, new information. <laughs> Nope, uh, that was my closing. Okay, well, my closing is I can't wait for the system. I'm excited for it. I probably won't be able to get it on launch, which is okay. I've only gotten, let's see, I think the GameCube. Nope, nope, it was only the Wii. Only the Wii I ever got on launch day. Oh, and the 3DS, because I pre-ordered that. Technically, I didn't get it on launch day. I got it the day after because of how shipping was where I was living. That is god-awful. I'll go over that later. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, that'll be our next series. Lux's Laments. <laughs> Lux's Sobbing Room. <laughs> this has been our thoughts on the Nintendo Switch game lineup slash presentation. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and or leave a comment below. Really enjoyed the video? Maybe you could share it with a friend who might also be interested in the Switch. Also, if you'd like to help us get a Nintendo Switch, please check out our Patreon and Coffee links. But if you want to look at more of my art, you can head over to my DeviantArt, Tumblr, or Twitter. Details in the description.